Hi guys, welcome back to Engineers YouTube channel. My name is Patricia Bermudez and I will be your host for today's video. And for today's video, we will be continuing on open systems, but for this problem, we will be focusing on nozzles. So the problem states that air enters an adiabatic nozzle steadily at 300 kilopascals, 200 degrees Celsius, and 30 meters per second, and leaves at 100 kilopascals and 180 meters per second. The inlet area of the nozzle is 80 square centimeter. So first determine the mass flow rate through the nozzle, and then the exit temperature of the air and the exit area of the nozzle. So from the given here, we have a nozzle. So we're gonna draw a nozzle. So, and then we know that there's air that enters and there's air that leaves. So the condition of the air that enters is that the pressure is 300 kilopascal. The temperature is 200 degrees Celsius. The velocity is 30 meters per second. And that's it. And then at the exit, there is a pressure of 100 kilopascal. And then a velocity of 180 meters per second. So, and then there's an inlet area given, which is 80 cm squared, okay? And what's required? The problem is asking for the mass flow rate, which is unknown, and then the exit temperature here, which is T2, which is unknown, and then the area, the exit here. So in this type of problem, we have to know that um, nozzles and diffusers produce no work. They produce no work. And if there is no heat given, even if it didn't state that it is adiabatic, we can assume that there's no heat involved in the problem at all. Okay. So first, it's asking for the mass flow rate. And for this one, we can use this equation. We know that mass flow rate is equals to velocity times the inlet area times density, right? But since there is no density given here, we can use these um, properties of the air to find the density using the ideal gas law. We know that PV is equals to nRT, right? And from this triangle, we know that... Um, mass divided by the number of moles will give you the molar weight, right? So we can um, replace N with M divided by the molar weight. So we have P is equals to um, PV is equals to the mass divided by the molecular weight. And this is equal to N times RT. And we know that density is mass over volume, right? So we can transpose volume here, and then we um, replace that with the molecular weight. So P and the molecular weight <clears throat> will give us the mass over volume times RT. And we know that um, this is um, density. So P M molecular weight is equals to density times RT. And therefore, density is equals to P times molecular weight over RT. Over RT, like so. And then we can replace that in the ideal, um, in, in this equation. And we can verify that this equation is correct by using um, units to see if this, the units here, will produce the required units here. We know that um, mass flow rate is... Um, kilogram per second, right? <clears throat> Therefore, kilogram per second is equals to velocity. What is our unit for velocity? It's meters per second. And then for area, it is meters squared. And then for density, it is kilogram per meter squared. Meter cube, sorry. And these are uh, in SI units, okay? You can see that um, meter squared times another meter will give us meter cube. And then it will cancel off the meter cube at the denominator here. And then what we're left is kilograms per second, which is equals to the mass flow rate. Therefore, we can verify that this indeed is correct. 
So what we have to do now is to substitute to get the mass flow rate. Okay. So your mass flow rate natin is equal to the velocity times the inlet area. We can use this actually. Kasi dito wala siyang, wala siyang temperature here. So we're going to use um the properties at the inlet to find the mass flow rate. And we know that the mass flow rate here is equal to the mass flow rate here. And it is consistent. Okay. So the velocity, so mass flow rate 1 is equal to the velocity 1. um And then area 1. And then in density natin which is P1. And then your molecular weight over R and then T1. Okay. And now we just have to substitute. We know that our um, velocity is at the inlet is 30 meters per second. And then our area is 80 cm squared. But since um what we're dealing here is meter meter, so we have to convert cm squared into meter squared. Okay, so we know that it, for every 100 cm, there is 1 meter. But since this is squared, this entire conversion, we have to square it also. And then the pressure here is um, 300 kilopascals. Okay. And then we just convert this into pascal. So 1 kilopascal is equals to 1,000 pascals. And then we have, now we have the velocity. We have the area, we have the pressure, and now the molecular weight of air. We know that for every one mole of air, there is um, 28.96 grams. And since the um, unit, SI unit for mass flow rate is kilograms per second, we have to convert these grams into kilograms as well. Actually, no. I made a mistake. The grams should be at the numerator since it is in the numerator here. So, balik tad to, itong conversion factor na to. It should be 28.96 grams for every one mole of air. So, 28.96 grams for every one mole of air. And you can see na dapat makancel din yung mole later. And then, for every 1,000 grams, there is 1 kilogram. Okay? And then, everything here is divided by R. And we're going to use 8.314. 8.314 joules per Kelvin. And we also know that joules is equal to Pascal meter cube. So we can use this here. Pascal meter cube over moles Kelvin. Okay. And then our temperature for the inlet is 200 degrees Celsius. And we have to convert it into Kelvin since um, the unit here is in Kelvin. And you also cannot take the ratio and the fraction of temperatures. They're not absolute. And degrees Celsius is not an absolute temperature. So we have to convert 200 to, to Kelvin. And we have to add 273.15 to that. And you can see um, that. Ang matitirang units here is actually um, kilogram per second. How? Okay, let's see. Itong CMQ makakancel kasi ito nakasquared siya. So, ano matitira? Um, meter squared and meter, right? And then, dito, kilopascal makakancel. And then, yung mole here makakancel. Pareho na sa denominators, makakancel yan. Itong Kelvin makakancel din. Itong grams here makakancel. And Pascal meter cube, ito, may meter cube, meter squared times meter is meter cube, makakancel yan. And then, yung Pascal here, makakancel. Pareho silang nasa numerator, so you can cancel. Ano ang letra? We have per second, times meron tayong kg here. And that is our unit for the mass flow rate. So, this is correct. We just have to calculate. So, yung mass flow rate natin is equal to... thirty times 80 times um, 1 over 100 and square that and then 300 times 1000 times 28.96 and then you divide that for 1000 then everything is divided by 8.314 times 200 plus 273.15 and our mass flow rate is 0 0.5.
0053 kilograms per second. And that is her answer for part A. And that is the mass flow rate of the nozzle. And then for the second part of the problem, the problem is asking for the exit temperature of the air. And how are we going to find that? Well, we have to use for open system energy balance. We have Q plus work is equal to change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy plus change in enthalpy. Okay. But in this problem, we know that the nozzle doesn't produce any work. So yung work natin is zero. And it's adiabatic. So yung Q natin is zero as well. There is a velocity change. So there is a change in kinetic energy. But there is no uh, change in height here given. So we can assume that potential energy is zero as well. And what we're left is kinetic energy and then the enthalpy. And we know that the formula for enthalpy is Cp and then the change in temperature. And we can use that to find D2. Okay? So yung um, ke natin is V2 squared minus V1 squared over 2GC. And then um, plus yung um, delta H natin, which is, we know that it is Cp delta T, right? And then it is equals to zero because this one is zero. And what we're going to do is transpose this to the other side. And before that, we have to know that GC for SI units is equals to one kilogram meter per second squared newtons. But then we know that newtons is equals to kilogram meter per second squared. So if we're going to replace that here, if we're going to substitute this here, we know that GC is equals to one kilogram meter per second squared times kilogram meter per second squared. And we can see, it's cancel din siya. See? Kilogram ka cancel here, meter ka cancel here. Etong second squared is in denominator, and this one is in the numerator. So, it will get canceled. So, yung GC natin is actually just one for SI units. Huh? And if it's different for um, English units. In English, you ha really have to put GC, but for SI, you don't have to. So, ayan. This one, you can just cancel it off because it's just one. So, ang formula natin would become V2 squared minus V1 squared over 2 is equals to negative Cp um, delta T. Okay? So, now we just have to substitute the values that we have. So, ang yung V2 natin is how much? 180 meters per second. So, we have 180 meters per second. And then you square that. And then yung V1 natin is 30 meters per second. We have 30 meters per second. And then that is squared as, as well. And then it is divided by 2. And then our CP, assume that air is ideal and diatomic. So yung CP natin is 7 over 2 R. Okay? So, um, negative 7 over 2. And then yung R natin is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And then, um, the units here is inconsistent. We have to convert this into joules per kilogram kasi meters per second meter squared per second squared is equals to joules per kilogram. So we have to convert this into joules per kilogram. Okay? And then, for every one mole of air, we have 28.96 grams. And then, convert grams, we have for every 1,000 grams, we have 1 kilogram. And then, okay na siya. Kilo, joules per kilogram, kasi makakancel yung mole here. Um... In grams, makakancel din. What we're left with is joules per kilogram. And that is equal here. And ano na lang yung hindi makancel? Yung, yung Kelvin. That's why we have to multiply it with the change in temperature. So yung change in temperature natin is T2, which is unknown, minus 200. And since we're talking about the difference, you don't have to convert this. And the difference in Celsius is equals to the difference in Kelvin. So 
Ayan ang unit niya, Kelvin also. And then, cancel. See? And it is dimensionally homogeneous now. And therefore, we can equate the two together. So, doing shift solve, we have T2 is equals to. So, the temperature here is 184.325.2345 degrees Celsius. Kasi yung um, T1 natin here, this one is in degrees Celsius. So, this one, your T2 is in degrees Celsius as well. Okay? So, that is our answer for part B. And for part C, the problem is asking for the exit area of the nozzle. And for this one, we're going to use the continuity equation. And our continuity equation involves this two. You know that the mass flow rate at the inlet is equal to the mass flow rate at the outlet. So, um, using continuity equation... Which states that M1 is equal to M2. You know that um, V1, A1, P1, and then the molecular weight over RT1 is equal to V2, A2, and then the molecular, uh, P2, sorry. And then the molecular weight here over R times T2. And dahil yung uh, molecular weight natin and yung R are constants, we can cancel it off. So we have to make A2 the subject of the equation. And A2 is equal to atong T2 it transpose may here. So V1, A1, T1, T2 over over ito naman, it transpose natin here. So what we did here is that itong T2, transpose it here. And then itong tatlo na to, it transposes here. Okay? So ito, ano ba yung ilalagay natin sa ilalim? We have V2. And then yung A2 yung subject. So ito, ito yung subject. Retain siya. There. And then um, P2. And then yung P1 here. So this is our equation to find outlet area. So our answer for part part C is V1 we have um 30 meters per second and then your area 1 natin is 80 cm squared. You don't have to convert this into meter kasi kung ano yung area ng A1 mo, I mean yung units ng A1 mo will also be the area of your um, outlet kasi lahat naman ng units here sa V ay makakancel dahil sa V2. Yung P1 makakancel dahil sa P2 and yung T2 makakancel dahil sa T1. Okay? And yung P1 natin is 300 kilopascal. And then yung T2 natin, we have found this earlier is this one. But we have to convert this into Kelvin kasi we cannot take ratios of temperatures that are not absolute. So yung 184, that rounded off to three decimal places. 325, we add 273.15 and you convert that in Kelvin. Okay? And then for the denominator, we have 180 meters per second. And then yung um, P2 natin is 100 kilopascal. And then finally, our T1 is 200. Then we add to 73.15 Kelvin. And our answer for that is, you can see na makakancel yung mga units here. Ito makakancel, kilopascal makakancel, and yung Kelvin makakancel. And ang unit natin for A2 will be cm squared. Okay? So, calculating, we have 30 times 80 times 300 times 184.325 plus 273.15 over 180 times 100 times 473.15. And we have 38.67 cm squared. And that is our answer for part C. And our solution is complete. So that is our solution for the problem. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned a lot from today and stay tuned for the next one. Bye-bye.